What up YouTube, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to this channel. Welcome back to my backyard. And today I wanna to talk about cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance really refers to that mental anxiety that we feel when we feel like we're being inconsistent with our decisions or the way that we're portraying ourselves to the world. So if you've ever been walking down the street and you've seen someone with a clipboard and that person stops you and it's like, do you believe you are a good person? Do you believe that we should be doing more for the environment? Do you believe that you know the environment, that nature's fruits are amazing and we should be passing them on to our child and our children and, and they get you to say yes to that and then they say after that well that's why we're trying to save this with this new initiative to save the whales we're only going to need five dollars a contribution from you today in order to get started i know you just said you're a good person therefore i know you're going to want to contribute to this charity or this nonprofit or whatever it is and a lot of times when you're put in that situation you feel really awkward you feel you're awkward because you do consider yourself to be a good person but for whatever reason, maybe you just don't want to give to that particular charity. A lot of the times in life, we'll feel this sense of cognitive dissonance. Here's another example. You know, I love to, to like smoke cigars every once in a while, kind of the way they like to have scotch every once in a while or wine. You know, I don't know a tremendous amount about it. Um, you know, I'm not like an aficionado. I'm not you know, super well versed in this, but every once in a while, you know, I just love to puff on a cigar, especially when it's summertime. Now, I do like cigars, but at the same time, I also like fitness. I just went under a 30 day fitness challenge where I was eating healthy. I was working out every single day. That's kind of uh, a really, I think, hypocritical. Like how can a guy who is into fitness also like to smoke cigars? It doesn't really make sense. It's very hypocritical. It's just inconsistent with how you might view me. Let me give you another example. When I was growing up, I was a very quiet person. I was a very introverted kid. And even to this day, I tend to err on the side of being more of a quiet person. And naturally, I just don't like to be out there socializing all that much. It's very draining for me. So if you ever were to meet me in person, Person, I probably might seem a little, little bit, bit different than my personality online. And sometimes people have actually said that. Or I had friends who know me in my personal life and then they'll watch one of my YouTube videos or they'll watch me doing my podcast or putting on some webinar and like, damn man, like you're really outgoing. Or like, wow, you know, you, you really like to talk. Um, you know, you really have a, a good vibrant energy. And they're like, that's so different. I would never expect that. Like you turn into a completely different person. This is an example of cognitive dissonance. People think they have you pegged one way, but really it's a little bit more complicated than that. Another great example of cognitive dissonance is that I'm really into spirituality. I'm really into personal development, self-improvement. I'm really into putting out good vibes and to sharing and, and creating great relationships that make your life happy. Now, I, I almost would say that I, there's a certain um, religious, almost spiritual aspect to a lot of the stuff that I talk about, whether that's being positive or you know creating circles of good vibes or really putting good karma out into the world. That's very mystical. You know, that's very um, sort of high esoteric kind of thinking, not really grounded so much in the practical, you know, numbers oriented business life. But at the same time, I also talk a lot about business. I also talk about how to get your money right, how to earn more income, um, how to set up a blog, how to market yourself, how to generate more cash flow, all these different things. A guy who is into spirituality, you know, not really needing anything, not needing fancy clothes, like looking at me right now, the clothes I'm wearing right now, this is a really low quality t-shirt. Like maybe I spent like 30 bucks for this. You know, my shoes, like maybe 75. I don't have a lot of um, high quality things around me when it comes to like jewelry or these things. But at the same time, I've mastered that area of my life of business. So this is another example of cognitive dissonance. The fact that I'm into spirituality, I'm into transcendence, not needing attachment to material things. But at the same time, I also have another area of my life where I'm really focused on business. I'm really focused on improving revenue, managing employees, etc. Now I'll give you a final example before I get into why this is such a bane of your existence, why this is a big creator of stress and unhappiness, and why it's something that you need to fix right now. There are different periods in my life where I've been in relationships and also where I've done a lot of dating. And one time when I was in one of these periods where I was dating a lot, I went to a party with a friend of mine and 
they'd only seen me really up until that point in more business situations or situations where you know the only friends involved and I have a very nice upbeat and positive personality but in a different situation when you're say like at a cocktail party or you're at a party with a bunch of people that some of them you don't know maybe you're interested in a girl or something like that they were really surprised to see my personality switched because I went from being a very nice you know kind of pleasing person into teasing people into really like I guess playing the asshole character a little bit and just more of putting on a different kind of character based on the environment. You know, I readily admit, <laughs> like sometimes I can be a bit mean to people in different areas of my life because sometimes I also do have bad days, but I think they were just so shocked to see that change, that personality change in me because they had viewed me one way and then in another situation I was acting very differently. You can kind of think of this as you're going into Walmart or you're going into a major store, you're going to a clothing store like H&M and you're interacting with a cashier or maybe a customer service representative and that person is super nice to you. They're really nice and happy but if you were to take them out of that situation and put them in a party you know, with their friends, their personality is probably going to change. Maybe they aren't as nice when they're, they're around that, them in that situation or maybe they just have a different vibe altogether. Um, depending on the, pers the, the situation that you meet someone in, their personality personality is going to be different. In life, we have so many different roles that we're trying to fulfill well. We're trying to be a mother or a father. We're trying to be a good friend. We're trying to be a lover. We're trying to be a boss maybe to our employees or a good employee. We have many different roles that we're trying to fill in life. And what we usually will try to do in our early stages is we'll try to be the same person in each of these roles. So if we're a nice person, we'll be nice with our friends and our family and also in business situations and really any other situation that comes up. But that's a recipe for disaster. Naturally, your mindset has to be very different when you're trying to accomplish something difficult than if you're just chilling with your friends and you're having a good time and you're appreciating nature. You know, I've made some other videos on how to be happy and also how to be successful and they're almost diametrically opposed opposites when it comes to the mindset. The second that the person who's trying to be the same person in every situation situation ends up saying, okay, maybe I'll be a little bit more aggressive in business or okay, maybe I'll be a bit more aggressive when I'm going out there and trying to, to accomplish something that's really a goal that I'm trying to achieve. Like I'm trying to get more fit. Or I'm trying to compete in this uh, pool of all of these applicants. I'm going to be a bit more aggressive. Usually what ends up happening is they feel bad. They feel like they're not being themselves. And particularly if they're acting one way with their significant other, a different way with their kids, a different way in work situations, they feel like they're losing their sense of identity. And this all kind of comes from the, the premise that you should be consistent, that you should be the same person in every situation, that if you are, um, you consider yourself to be a nerd, you shouldn't wear rocker clothing. Or if you consider yourself to be a badass, you know, you shouldn't put on a suit or you shouldn't wear like more geeky style clothing. It's almost this fear to be inconsistent with how you've been portraying yourself for most of your life. If you've been shy all of your life and very quiet, you naturally think that if you start to randomly be extroverted, it would just be weird, awkward, and not you. This desire to be consistent is what causes stress. It's what causes a lot of anxiety and even things as minor as maybe giving someone some really good advice that they need to hear, something that is accurate, but maybe you're also being a little bit hypocritical because you also need that same advice. It doesn't invalidate necessarily what you're telling that person. It just also means you need to listen to your own advice. Now, of course, I do not have this fully mastered myself. This is just a concept that I've discovered and something that when I finally got to the point where I realized, you know what? It is hypocritical sometimes. Like, yeah, I'm talking about fitness and healthy eating, but I'm also smoking a cigar. Yeah, I'm talking about being spiritual, more open, and being very nice and aware of other people's emotions. In other areas of my life, sometimes I frankly ignore other people's emotions in order to get what I want in business sometimes. It is okay to be hypocritical 
and it's also okay to be inconsistent. And the more that you tell yourself this, the more that you're okay with maybe one day wearing some clothing that doesn't necessarily reflect how you might view yourself, maybe wearing you know, a necklace or wearing a bracelet, or you know, I've been experimenting with just wearing different types of fashion items wearing these different things, people view me a different way than normally, but that's okay. I think there's always this fear that someone's gonna call you out and be like, that's not you, you know, or like you should not be wearing that because that's not consistent with who you are. Or someone calling you out being like, hey, you're smoking a cigar. You were just talking about fitness. You're not allowed to do both of those. When you finally just accept, you know what? I like both of these things. It's okay to be inconsistent sometimes and to have a, an identity that is fluid, one that has you know, a lot of different components to it. You can be liking you know, deep fried Oreos and you can also like salad. You can be running on the treadmill and some days you can also be a couch potato. It's okay to be these different things. And even sometimes with some of my coaching students, they'll be hyper successful people, really, really successful, really, really productive, but maybe in other cases, for whatever reason, they're going through a down period in their life, they're just not as productive or not as amped up, and that's okay. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't be what you want and who you are. I think the best, um, you know, the way to end this video is just to say that the the more you adopt a I don't give a fuck attitude, usually the better life turns out. Right now you're seeing very real world examples of how I'm inconsistent sometimes in my own life, but I would love to hear from you. What are you inconsistent about? Do you have something that you love? Like maybe you're really intellectual, you love books, you love learning, you also love trashy TV shows like Jersey Shore. You also love, you know, other MTV things like that, like candy that's, or you know, I, you love reading the gossip column, something like that. I would love to hear from you down below in the comments if you have any inconsistencies in your life that give you a little bit of apprehension or almost like it's a little bit guilty to share them. I also have a really great video that I wanna share with you on happiness and sort of the dichotomy that you need if you want to be both happy and successful. There are two very different mindsets. And I'm not talking about successful in a traditional sense. I'm talking about hyper successful, doing something that's difficult to do, like start your own business, like you know getting outside of the average when it comes to fitness or anything like that. There are two very different mindsets. If you want to check out that video, go and check out the link down below in the description. I will include it there. Finally, if you are liking some of these new videos that I'm putting out, I would love it if if you could take a second to subscribe to this channel. So that way you'll get notifications when new videos come out. And I'd also love to hear from you. you know, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. That's the only way that I'll know that you want more content like this and I can spend time to make it for you. Whether you've been watching my videos about drone flying or finding my birth mother or my, my ancestry DNA or by podcasting, blogging, whatever it is, however you found me, I wanna just take a second to say thank you. And I hope that the videos that I put out enhance your life they make you smile, maybe they make you laugh, um, and also that you have some actual strategies going forward that you can use to enhance your life, to be happier, to be more successful, and to really achieve that vision, anything that you want in life. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman, and I'll see you next time.